Hi everyone, today we're going to make a platter using strip construction um, and it's going to be along the same lines as this one up here that I made a little while back. But the one today is going to be a lot more complex and I think it's going to really test my patience. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art, my name is Jeff. And um, I think I'm underestimating just how much this is going to test my patience. The design, which I'll show you shortly, is quite complex. There's a lot of cutting uh, of little strips, some of them quite small. So um, it'll not too sure whether this will be a two-part video. It may end up being a two-part video. But um, I'm hoping the end result is going to be well worth it. So stick around we'll see how it all works out give me your comments on this um, I think there's probably going to be a few interesting ones and if I haven't covered everything that you need to know don't forget ask me in the comment section below now if you like the video please hit that like button and if you uh, want to see more of these videos subscribe and turn on the notifications okay materials design and equipment well, let's deal with design first. This is the design. That looks huge, but the final piece is actually only about three quarters of that. It's actually uh, 294 by 153 millimeters, that is. And it's all done by strip construction. And I'll be laying it up that way. Now in this one, most of the pieces will run horizontally a few pieces will run vertically and I've had to do that because in some places there um, it's the only way I could get uh, small pieces like this um, very hard to cut one little square which is equivalent to a three by three uh, millimeter square so the smallest I normally cut is two squares which is equivalent to three mils by six mils now, as in the other video that I did, I'll be cutting um, six mil wide strips of whatever length required, and they'll be all laid up on edge. Now, as you can guess, there is a lot of pieces in there. The colors don't really match the colors I'm using, so don't pay too much attention to the colors. And uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh. We were saying about how many pieces there are. I have laboriously done a count and you can probably see that. There's a lot of cutting there. The colors I'll be using are top up here is 0203 which is woodland brown, um, 0310 which is uh, umber, 0309 which is cinnabar, 0139 which is almond and we will be using a small amount of black and white. Now if you haven't watched one of my channels before I'll just uh, mention that all of the glass I use here is bullseye COE90 and um, I'll be fusing things up on thin fire paper and when I slump this um, into a mould, I haven't decided which mould yet when I slump it into a mould, I'll be spraying that mould with boron nitride. Don't forget, safety is the most important thing. Make sure you wear glasses when you're cutting your glass. And kiln glasses if you go looking into your kiln. And a mask when you're cleaning up things like uh, thin fire paper. As far as equipment is concerned, there's no real special equipment for this. Um, you'll need something to uh, grind edges and refine lengths um, which can be done on a small grinder and it can even be done with diamond pads. The other thing you will need is just some way of damming it up as you assemble it on the kiln shelf. And something else I need to cover for you, I'm not too sure whether I said before, this grid is based on a 3 by 3 mil square. 3 mil because it's um, basically 3 mil glass that we work with. And um, I use a 3 mil square so it gives me multiples of 3 mil. 
So when you look at how to work out the lengths that I need, a lot of it's very straightforward. It's laborious to work out, but it's very straightforward. But when you get into areas like this here, you don't want to be trying to cut a single square of glass. It's going to be very difficult. So I have to work out how I can do this by cutting a minimum of a six mil length of glass. So that's what that little red line is. That says that I need a piece that'll go, one piece that'll go that way, another piece that'll go that way, and another piece that'll go that way. And you can see that if I went one piece right across there, I'd be left with this square here. And I've got a problem then because that means I've got to try and cut a three mil length of glass. And I've tried it, believe me, and that's hard. As you probably have suspected, cutting all of this glass is going to take quite a while. Um, I have a lot of little six mil strips of glass to cut. And I'm not going to bore you with watching me cut all that glass. I'll video a little bit of it and then we'll be back and uh, we'll assemble it. So I'm going to get on with cutting. Wish me luck because cutting little strips of glass is tedious and it gets me in the back as well. So I'll be having quite a few breaks. I've um, finished cutting up all my little strips. It took quite a while to do all of that. I've got them reasonably organised. And I've got my shelf over here. It is on an angle facing towards me. I've got thin fire on it and I've yet to cut a little strip of thin fire for that dam. Once I do that, then I'll start laying up the pattern. Now this will probably take a couple of days, so just hang in there. Okay, here's where I'm at. Um, it's taken a while to get here because I come across a number of issues that I haven't in the past. Uh, generally, a lot of these um, are done um, laterally. Basically, um, the patterns are just made up of pieces that run in the same direction. But this one, on the border here, I've got pieces going both directions. Here is where I run into trouble. The trouble is that 3 mil glass is not necessarily 3 mils. It's uh, maybe a little bit bigger, or thicker I should say, a little bit thinner. I thought it would average out um, throughout that pattern. But the average is actually more than 3 mils, and substantially more than 3 mils. Which meant that the pattern that I had along there tended to push everything out further and further. Now this then had an impact on the central pattern here. 
which means that all the pieces in here had to be longer. That created a problem for me because I had pre-cut pieces here and they were no longer going to fit. So what I've now done is I have adjusted the border, adjusted the design of this, closer to the length that I originally wanted, which means I just had to just adjust the pattern in the middle here. That also meant that these long pieces here were not quite right, so I had to recut those. This also means that the pattern up the side is a little bit in doubt, or I should say a lot in doubt. I'm not quite sure how the junction between the reversing patterns here is going to look, because I'm not too sure how that's going to be, how or should say how long that's going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the central pattern, and I think I've been generous and estimated the width of that. Then I'm going to have to cut these lengths to fit once I've built that full pattern. And then I've got to work out how this pattern along here goes so the junction, the join here, works out. And the fun part is getting these out to cut them. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that as yet. I think I'm going to have to loosen off one end a little bit and get something like this, which is just a thin piece of plastic. Slide it in first so I can get each of these pieces out, cut it, put it back. So where I'm at at the moment, um, I'm not even halfway through, so I've got a long way to go yet. Um, I will take more video as I go along and I will share with you the problems I have as I go along.